Okay, I'm going to say this is hand sync for the Zoom recorder. So this will be take one. And what makes a good documentary is to fulfill the assumptions of the audience. The audience expects when they see a documentary a certain amount of truth. Now, truth is a very subjective thing in filmmaking, but um, that's how it's somewhat different than a narrative film as well. Good documentaries tell a good story because regardless of whether you're doing narrative, doc, or whatever, you want it to be a compelling story and interest people. But that story doesn't necessarily have to be a three-act structure. It doesn't have to come to a resolution. It doesn't have to build an ebb and flow. It could actually be something that's very good quality that is a vivid, engaging story. And, and that means great characters. And so uh, one of the first things one looks for in a successful documentary is does it, does it grip the viewer? And, and, I mean, in a way, nothing else matters because if you don't engage the viewer, what are you doing? You're wasting time. What I learned was that it's that documentaries don't succeed because of information. They succeed because of engagement. And the best way to engage the audience is to have great characters. No one is obsessed and crazy like a Civil War reenactor. And working with those guys was very interesting. And I was there to do... Production photos, behind the scenes photos, and makeup because I have theater experience. So I did all like the bullet holes and the wounds. And I thought these guys were going to look at me as like, you're the weirdo, tattooed, earring liberal from DC. And they're all talking like the war is still on and the South will rise again. But yet when I got out the bandages and the fake blood and, you know, all that stuff, they're like, how was I shot? How was I injured? Was it, well, if I was shot from, I, I was headed this way. So they would have had to hit me like this. And I would have fallen down like that. And I'm like, dude, I just want to put blood all over your face. In documentary, you're, you're exploring a pre-existing condition. You're exploring our world um, with these fantastic tools. And you're able to share that exploration with, with your audience, with others. In fiction film, which is great, you're creating a world that's reflecting on the one that exists. But I like the honesty um, and the challenge of working in the real world. A documentarian is supposed to be a fly on the wall. He's supposed, he or she, is supposed to be somebody who is not taking a partisan point of view. Always think of how to sort of anchor yourself to that statement, to that sort of thesis and how to make everything flow from there and connect to it, then you'll keep everything grounded and connected. I think a bad doc or a bad film overall loses that sometimes. They stray from it in a way that doesn't make sense. Uh, or they muddle that message by making it too complicated. A bad documentary doesn't reflect any real story. Um, so we aren't we don't really care about what's going to happen next we we are willing to switch it off no in a in a powerful document you want to know what's going to happen next you can't wait to know what is going to happen so 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 and that's all about storytelling um the um, third thing that, that has been a bad document is when is when the marketing and outreach and distribution fail and no one sees the film. I mean that's a terrible. That I mean a bad a document can be can have all the elements of of being great, but if no one sees it, it has failed. Let's say that you were shooting a, a scene between uh, in, up in the North Pole and you got polar bears happening, and um, the film is about the mating of the polar bears. And I'm making this up, but let's pretend that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a male polar bear grunts at a female polar bear and she grunts back and that's the way that they kind of have the language and then they go off and mate on an iceberg or whatever. Um, and when you filmed this mating ritual, you couldn't get a microphone very close because you can't get close to polar bears because they will eat you. Then you come back three weeks later to the same location and you see the same bears mating and you this time you get the sound. Is it unethical to match the sound with the video, even though they were taken two or three weeks apart? Now, purists would say that is wrong. I myself would say it doesn't matter. I would, I would assess that as a trifling error, tri not a, a trifling ethical uh, uh, aberration, not not worth. It doesn't matter because there are a lot worse things you could do. You could have two. You could have two um, guys in the studio <laughs> acting like two bears 
uh, mating and recording that sound. Now that would be unethical because then, because the sounds may not be accurate. Consequently, where you decide to create your truth and where you decide to end your manipulation, I think that's really a matter of personal ethics and whether or not you're deliberately, you know, lying to your audience rather than creating a truth.